Like listening to podcasts just like this one from the team at Witch? Well, we've got some good news. All our podcasts are now available to listen to on YouTube and YouTube Music. So whether you like listening to Get Answers, Witch Shorts or Witch Money, all episodes can now be listened to directly on YouTube or through the YouTube Music app. To find them, just search for the podcast you'd like to listen to. YouTube's additional functionality also means that you can now read along with subtitles as you listen. Don't panic though, all which podcasts are still available to listen to elsewhere too. So wherever you listen, we'll see you soon. When life gives you questions, which get answers. Welcome to the Witch Money Podcast, your weekly hit of money news and personal finance hacks to help make you better off. I'm your host, Lucia Ariano, and here's what's coming up this week. I get in contact with brands in the supermarket and say how much I love their product. Or if there's a new product out, I'll say, hey, can you send me a coupon for me to try it? And they will, because brands love consumer feedback. So a couple of the eyebrow raising examples we found included a jar of Nescafe Gold Blend at Sainsbury's. They launched a nectar price on it for £6 and the price for non-members was £8.10. However, it had been available to everyone for £6 just two days before this loyalty deal launched. This week on the podcast, we're looking at supermarkets. We've just had the latest inflation figures and whilst it's starting to come down, prices are still rising. So how can you save money on your supermarket shopping? We'll be talking prices, bargains, the cheapest supermarket and deep diving into the latest loyalty card news as well as plenty, plenty more along the way. And to bring us up to speed on all of this, I'm very excited to say I'm joined by Witch's senior retail and personal finance editor, Ellie Clark and Jordan Cox better known as Britain's Coupon Kid and a friend of the podcast and an old friend of mine. Hello, thank you for joining us today. Hello, how are we? Hello. Well, shall we start from the beginning then? You know, generally speaking, inflation is down. Um, Ellie, we've just heard the latest figures from the Office for National Statistics, which looks at price changes over the last 12 months to calculate inflation. Now, the figure's the lowest it's been since December 2021. Can you talk us through it and also how food prices feed into this, for want of a, a better phrase? Yeah, absolutely. So the Office for National Statistics inflation is based on a basket of around 700 different goods, some of which are food and drink. And as you said, it's down this month, which is really positive. So um, it's down to 3.2%. However, that does mean the prices are still going up. So even though inflation going down is good, prices are still going to be higher than what you were paying a year ago. Mm. Um, Obviously, within that basket of 700 things, some things have got more expensive and others have got cheaper. So if you break it down to food and drink, for example, bread and cereal are pricier than last year. Whereas some the random selection of examples that they've given this month, but meat, crumpets and chocolate biscuits <laughs> are cheaper. Um, and shall we get a bit deeper then into food prices? Can you explain how our inflation tracker works? Because it does go very deep into supermarkets and budget ranges and all sorts. That's right. So our, our own inflation tracker looks at around 25,000 different food and drink products. And like you say, we don't just look at what types of food and drink are going up, but we also split it by supermarket and by food ranges. Um, When we last looked at the numbers, which was based on February, Sainsbury's had the highest inflation rate. So prices at Sainsbury's were up 8.2% compared to the previous year. There was quite a big gap between Sainsbury's and the second highest, which was Tesco at 5.5% and then Aldi at 5.3%. And I thought it was really interesting when I was looking at the figures that Ocado and Waitrose, the sort of two upmarket supermarkets were down at the bottom with the lowest rates of inflation of um, 3.6 and 3.7% respectively, which I guess implies that maybe because they charge higher prices in the first Mm. place, maybe there's a little bit more wiggle room for them to absorb a little bit of that inflation themselves rather than passing the whole lot on to consumers. We also look at supermarkets ranges. So we compare the big brands against supermarkets own labels. Within that, we look at budget, mid-range and premium. And we found that the budget own label ranges have by far the highest inflation rate at the minute of 16.7%. And that's compared to the big brands and the other supermarket kind of mid-range and premium ranges 
lurking between sort of 4.5 and 5%, which basically means that those people who are having to rely on the budget ranges are being squeezed an awful lot harder than, than others. So what about, say, you know, olive oil comes to my mind, but what about anything that's still expensive? What's still rocketing? Yeah, so olive oil does seem incredibly pricey at the minute. Mm. Um, so personally, I'm just, I'm buying rapeseed oil instead. So it, because yes. that's grown in the UK and it's cheaper anyway. So that's my kind of cost saving tip there. I've also um, kind of speaking to our researchers, they're saying that coffee production prices are going up. So even though it doesn't seem to be that much pricier at the minute, that might be one that's coming down the line in terms of um, price rises, unfortunately. And you've already started us off. Let's talk more about savings. Jordan, this is where you come in. So let's say you've got your weekly shopping list. It might include some really super sky high items like the ones we've talked about. How would you start by keeping costs down? Well, first of all, I'd have all of the cashback apps installed on my phone. So this is things like Shopmium, Checkout Smart, Green Gin. All of these are cashback apps where if you buy a certain item, take it home, then scan in a picture of the receipt, then you get some money back into your account. And it can be for some staple items. There have been um, cereal on there before. There's been your bread, your milk. So if you are going in to a supermarket, have a look on those apps to see if there's something there. Okay, let's start from the beginning. You download this app. One, one of those app, maybe all of them, then you go to any supermarket and buy this one product. Is that how it works? Yeah. So all of these different apps have different offers on items. Um, some of them might be, you know, cereal at Tesco's or fruit at Sainsbury's. And if mm -hmm. you find one that matches up to where you're going to shop, then you just go in there, buy it as you normally would, and then take a picture of the receipt and scan the barcode when you get home. And then you get some money back. Sometimes there are complete freebies on there. You know, you get your free bar of chocolate or a, a bottle of pop, and you just need to scan in the barcode and the receipt for doing it. So it's a pretty easy way to save money. And if there are things on there that you were going to get anyway in the supermarket of your choice, then it's a nice way to save. Amazing. And just say those again, because actually I'm not really familiar with these apps, surprisingly. Uh, so it's Shopmium, Checkout Smart and Green Gin. Green Gin is probably one of my favorites, not because there's loads of offers on there, but it has a lot of specialty food and a lot of um, fruit and vegetables as well, which is actually quite hard to get discounts on. Jordan, tell us more. Come on. I feel like I, feel like I stopped you mid-flow. What else were you going to say? <laughs> so obviously, I'm constantly looking for coupons or deals or that kind of thing. Um, so whenever I'm shopping in the supermarket, I'm on an app called Trolley, mm -hmm. which is a supermarket comparison app where it will show you the prices of all of the food on one place. So if you if you need to pick up something specific and you think, okay, which supermarkets do I need to go to? You go onto the trolley app, you type it in, it will tell you what the prices are at each supermarket. So that's a really easy way of just doing things beforehand. And also in my spare time, it sounds so silly, but <laughs> I get in contact with brands in the supermarket and say how much I love their product. Or if there's a new product out, I'll say, hey, can you send me a coupon for me to try it? And they will, because brands love consumer feedback. So if you mm. just send them a quick email, even put in a little bit of effort, you know, write them a poem or a song or send them in a picture, they love all that. And they'll send you coupons in the post, which can save you a lot of money on your shopping. I've done this in the past, and I got about £30 from sending a poem to my favorite drinks company. I got £20 for saying my cat loves their cat food. It sounds <laughs> absolutely bonkers. But it works. I love that. That's a little bit more left field, isn't it? <laughs> and Ellie, you know, what would you add to this? <laughs> well, now I'm just busy thinking about what poems I could write for my favourite <laughs> food brands. But um, if, if you're of a less creative bent, there are loads of different things you can do. So the first thing to do is think about the psychological tactics that supermarkets use. So from the minute you walk through the door of a supermarket, they are playing with you. They're playing with your senses. That smell of freshly baked bread is no coincidence. It's there because it makes you think, mm, I'm hungry and I wonder what else I can buy that isn't on my shopping list. They also are very clever about spreading the essentials um, around all different corners of the store. So, you know, you've got your fruit and veg at the beginning, eggs might be halfway through the supermarket and bread might be at the end, which tempts you to walk down all the aisles, some of which you might not have really needed to go down. Mm. Um, and it's even down to really minute details like the shelf positioning. So um, if you look next time you're in a supermarket, you might notice that the most expensive items or the big brand items are at eye level, whereas the own brand budget ranges are right down at the bottom or right up at the top. So you have to work that a little bit harder to get the cheaper products. Um, they also use really interesting tactics. Um, so 
you might find that the same sort of item is available in different parts of the supermarket. So your chickpeas or your coconut milk might be in the normal canned goods bit, but might also be in the world foods aisle at a Mm -hmm. slightly lower price. You can also make smart swaps. So, for example, I always buy frozen prawns rather than fresh ones because they're cheaper that way. And a lot of the time, because they're frozen as soon as they're caught, they'll be really nice and fresh as well. And you can do the same with fruit and veg. If you're comparing different items, trying to work out which is the cheapest, always look at the unit pricing, which is that small print on the price label, which says the price per 100 grams or per 100 mils, for example. And that's the most accurate way that you can compare different pack sizes or different brands. And then my final one, which is a little bit different, is to avoid convenience stores at all costs. Mm. So we've looked into this time and time again, and we, we tend to do it by comparing big Tesco supermarkets against Tesco Express and big Sainsbury's supermarkets against Sainsbury's locals. When we looked at this last year, if you always did your food shopping at your local Tesco Express, you'd end up paying over £800 more over the course of the year than if you went to the big Tesco supermarket. Gosh, that is such a massive difference. And Jordan, I can see you nodding and smiling um, during all of these tips that Ellie's giving us. And I have to say, you know, if, if anyone's finding bargains, it's you. I should say for our listeners, you know, we worked together years ago. So I can personally vouch for, vouch for the fact that you are very passionate about bargains, as if it hasn't already come across. But, you know, tell us, are there still bargains to be found? You know, have you come across anything just amazing recently? Because I know you have in the past. I'm constantly looking out for the next freebie or next deal or next bargain. It's yeah, it's sort of become almost an obsession of scrolling through Facebook pages and forums and all that to try and mm. find the deals. The ones in the supermarket are harder to find than they have been recently, just because prices have gone up on basically everything. Loyalty cards aren't the same as they were. So a lot of the loyalty schemes now in the supermarket, there's a barrier to entry for a lot of the offers in store where you have to have a Tesco club card or a Sainsbury's Nectar card to get the standard one pound off or half price that everyone could get before. Um, So it's becoming harder and harder to find deals and discounts. That's not to say they aren't out there because there Mm. are obviously the cashback apps. If you can get the loyalty cards, if you can find any coupons for freebies, which do pop up, just have a look around on Facebook pages and forums to see if there are any free coupons or free cashback that you can get. There are deals out there. Like the other day, I got um, a a free uh, drink from the supermarket by using a coupon. There are loads of things. Are long gone the days where, if any of our listeners might remember, you know, there would be a news article where you'd got a shopping basket uh, of 40 plus pounds for nothing. Does that still happen? Oh, it, it's a tricky one to answer because it could happen if you put a lot of work into emailing brands and things. But for the mm-hmm. standard consumer, I'm going to say no, it can't really happen anymore. Purely because back in the day, back in my day when I first started, <laughs> you could print out coupons, you could take loads in and use them all in one transaction. And now they're all on your phone. They're all on cashback apps, which is great in terms of the ease of access. A lot more people can use them. Mm. You can't forget them at home because it's all in the palm of your hand. But the amount of coupons that are out there are a little bit less. But if you're a person that used to forget them or you know didn't have the time for them, it's now easier than ever to save money. So that is a good trade-off. Well, there is some hope yet. Well, you mentioned loyalty cards there. In a moment, we'll be back to talk about them and whether they're all they're cracked up to be after this quick break. 2023 was momentous in the fight against fraud. It saw the passing of the Online Safety Act and the Financial Services and Markets Act. Both of these happening after years of exhaustive campaigning from us here at Witch. But the battle against scams is far from over. Stay in the know and avoid falling victim to scammers by joining over 450,000 others who have signed up to our Witch Scam Alerts. To sign up, head to witch.co.uk slash scam alert today. Welcome back. And now let's talk about loyalty cards then. They're not just about collecting points anymore. They've become a much bigger part of the weekly shop. Ellie, can you explain how they work across the biggest supermarkets? Yeah, so there's been a massive shift in how loyalty schemes work. Um, Like you say, they used to be about collecting up your points, saving them, maybe using, using them to get a discount on your shopping once you'd saved up a lot of points over the course of a few months. 
everyone would pay the same price at the till when you were in the supermarkets. If there was a discount, it would be available to everyone. And now there's been this massive shift at the likes of Tesco, Sainsbury's and also Morrison's are beginning to do it too, where if you are a member of their scheme, you get instant discounts across big range of food. And at which we did um, a huge amount of research last year into some of the offers. Tell us, are they as good as they seem? Unfortunately, not always. Mm. So back in June last year, we looked at over 100 Nectar and Club Card prices at Sainsbury's and Tesco and tracked the items prices back over the six months prior to them launching with the loyalty discounts. Um, And we found that almost a third had been at their so-called regular or non-discounted price for less than half of that time, which really calls into question just how good these member exclusive discounts really were. So a couple of the the most sort of eyebrow raising examples we found included a jar of Nescafe gold blend at Sainsbury's. They launched a nectar price on it for £6 and the price for non-members was £8.10. However, it had been available to everyone for £6 just two days before this loyalty deal launched. And we also found that that new £8.10 regular price was over a pound higher than um, you'd have to pay at any other supermarket, including the posh ones. And then when it comes to Tesco, we spotted a Blue Dragon sweet chilli sauce, which had a club card price of £2 and a regular price of £2.70. But it had only been on sale at that regular high price for eight days before the promotion launched, which was just 4% of that six month period we looked at. Oh, it's cheeky stuff, isn't it? I mean, what does this mean in reality, though, when you go to the supermarket? Do we need to have a wallet full of loyalty cards to get the best prices? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, yes. Regardless of whether the deals are quite as good as they seem, the fact remains that they do get you a lower price at the till. So if you're a regular shopper at Sainsbury's or Tesco, then yes, joining the loyalty scheme will save you money. However, you don't need to worry too much about having a physically bulging wallet. You can download the apps and that's really handy because if you forget your loyalty card, you've probably got your phone with you and you can scan your app and still get that discount. And you mentioned a few there, Ellie. So Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Morrison's starting to do it. Are any other supermarkets jumping on this bandwagon? So there are new loyalty schemes that have come out in the past few years-ish. One of them from Lidl, which is already a discount supermarket, and then you're getting even more money back by using their loyalty scheme. It's on an app. They offer coupons that rotate every single Thursday, which is handy. Mm. And then if you spend certain thresholds in store in a calendar month, then you can get freebies or even 10% off your shopping. So that's a good one to have if you're a little shopper. But my personal favorite loyalty scheme at the moment is actually from Asda, which only launched in the past few years. And it basically works like a cashback app. There are loads of different star products on there where if you buy one of their products in store and scan your Asda loyalty cap at the till, then you can get money back. It could be 50p, it could be a pound, it could be 10% back. And all of that, it comes in as cash. So once you've built up enough, you can redeem it for a voucher to spend in Asda. And they have a few other little things as well, like they have missions. Most people, if you spend four times in a calendar month, you get a pound for the first few shops, you get two pound for the next few shops. And if you're spending under a pound, you can actually make a little bit of money from it. You can go in, buy a banana, scan your app, get a pound back, and you've made a little bit of profit. (laughs) So Asda is a really good one. That's a hack. And if you have a blue light card as well, you get an extra 10% back on all of your spend in the Mm. shop. So if you work for the NHS or emergency services, that's invaluable. And generally speaking, if you're using the app, do you get better deals than if you're using just the card or is it the same across the board? I'm just thinking, really, should I be telling my mum that she really needs to swap those physical cards for using the apps? Some of the different schemes do offer rewards and extra points if you have the app. So Tesco and Sainsbury's have been doing this, Morrison's as well. So sometimes it is more beneficial to have the app just to see if there are any bonus rewards you can get. Uh, But on the most part, as long as you've got one, hopefully it will save you a bit of money. There's also an app you can download called Stocard or Stockard, which is S-T-O-C-A-R-D. And if you didn't want to carry them all around in your wallet, you can add them all to the app and they're all in one place. So you load up the app and then you can scan it which saves you from having to rummage around in your wallet when you get to the checkout. And, you know, Ellie, we should just cover all bases. What are the problems with these schemes? Are there any? You know, can everyone access them? What do you have to give in return? Yeah, they on the surface, it sounds like it's a no-brainer. Just join the loyalty scheme if you want the discount. Mm. 
but actually they're not available to everybody. So for example, some schemes don't let you join if you're aged under 18 or if you don't have a permanent UK address, which means that some of the most vulnerable people out there, you know, maybe a teenage mum or a homeless person can't get that discount that a few years ago would have been available to everybody. There's also a big issue with these schemes in that they're not doing this out of the goodness of their hearts. They're doing it to harvest our data. If you use a loyalty scheme every time you're shopping, they're not only collecting things about, you know, what's your favourite brand of bread, but also really quite personal information about the sort of toiletries or medication that you're buying from the supermarket. And they use this to market to you directly in terms of the offers that they want to offer you through your Mm. loyalty card, but also they sell this data on for millions and millions of pounds. And some people just aren't willing to hand over their data in that way and don't want to join the scheme. And if, if that's you, then all I can really say is switch to another supermarket that doesn't require you to be a member of a loyalty scheme in order to get the lower prices. So, for example, Aldi is a discounter in the first place, so you get lower prices there anyway. There's also Asda, which Jordan was mentioning earlier, and M&S. They're all kind of resisting this loyalty pricing mm. trend. And before we go then, let's have some final tips for anyone listening, thinking about their next supermarket shop. Maybe it's for dinner tonight, like me. Maybe it's an online weekly one. You know, I wish I was that organised. Ellie, do you want to go first? What advice would you give? Well, firstly, Lucia, slap on the wrist. I do want you to get organised and make a (laughs) weekly shopping list and do it online. You will save money if you do that. And particularly if you do do it online, you'll probably end up spending less less than if you go to a supermarket because you Mm. don't have that same level of sort of browsing temptation and finally i know it's a bit of an oldie but i think it's a goldie as well don't shop when you're hungry ellie i feel like you've just hit the nail on the head then I am very guilty of shopping in convenience stores and when I need to shop, which is often just before I need to cook. So thank you. I will try. I will really try and take those on board. And Jordan, what would you like to add? Again, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Have a look out for yellow stickers. That is Mm. one of the biggest ways that I save money on my meals is I go into the supermarket a few hours, maybe an hour before it closes, find something in the reduced section which usually has up to about 80 or 90% off if you go in last minute and you can get some really cheap meals. I picked up a a, a Pizza Express pizza, which was usually about five quid. It was 50p the other day just because I went in last minute and it was about to expire. I had a massive trifle as well, which was bigger than my head for 10p. <laughs> so there are lots of offers in the reduced section. Have a look for them. Are there any shops that are better than others at doing these yellow sticker deals? The best ones you're going to find is usually in Tesco, Sainsbury's, uh, Asda and Morrison's. Sometimes they do do them in Lidl and Aldi as well, but it's in Mm. very, very small portions. Um, Lidl themselves actually do a massive fruit box of wonky veg for £1.50. Usually that's at the start of a store day. So have a look around for those as well. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you both on the show today. Thank you, Ellie and Jordan. And hopefully we'll get you on the show again soon. Jordan, for anyone listening, uh, how do people hear more from you? Yeah, if you just Google Coupon Kid uh, or go on to Coupon Kid UK on Instagram, I'm sharing all my tips there. Thank you very much for having me and goodbye. Well, a huge thank you again to Ellie and Jordan for coming on the show today and to you for listening to this week's episode of the Witch Money podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, please do hit subscribe to make sure you catch our new episodes as soon as they drop. For daily money news and advice, you can find us on social media at Witch Money and online at witch.co.uk forward slash money. And we also have a free money newsletter, which is delivered to your inbox every Monday. To sign up, visit witch.co.uk forward slash money newsletter. This episode of the Witch Money podcast was written by me, Lucia Ariano, alongside Adrian Bradley, produced by me and Adrian Bradley, and edited by James Rowe. You've probably heard of Witch Magazine, our home of hard-hitting journalism and informative stories delivered directly to our members. There's our travel, money and tech mags too. But did you know you can hear some of our best articles for free, available to listen to whenever you like? Each week on the Witch Shorts podcast, we bring you a specially selected story, lovingly voiced and produced especially for you on a whole range of fascinating topics. Just search Witch Shorts wherever you're listening.